Hi folks. Today we're going to take a look at a newer type of sensor. Beginning in about the 2016 model year, most newer after-treatment systems attached to heavy-duty diesel engines are going to have one of these. It's a particulate matter or soot sensor. These sensors typically sit on the outlet side of the SCR. They measure the soot that is exiting the exhaust system. Now this is downstream from the DPF, so any soot that it measures is bypassing the DPF. The DPF is not 100% efficient in catching soot. Some does bypass it, but if excessive amounts are passing through, then it means the DPF could be damaged, and this sensor is there to pick that up. Today we'll be looking at and changing out a soot sensor in a Volvo truck with a Volvo engine. Now these PM sensors, or particulate matter sensors, are a lot like the NOx sensors in the sense that they are a smart sensor. They are a four wire sensor, they receive a five volt power supply, a ground, and two data link connections. Now according to Volvo, these PM sensors need to be handled very carefully. Even a slight drop can damage the sensor and have it not reading right. Just like NOx sensors, they come with a protective cap over the end, and it should be left on until you're ready to install it, because it can get contamination inside of there. And again, just like the NOx sensors, you should never use any anti-seize or anything like that in the threads where they thread into the exhaust. Now on these Volvos in particular, over the last year we've had a lot of problems with soot sensors. I've seen a lot of them replaced. In a bulletin I received from Volvo, it appears that at some point an updated part number for these sensors was released. For example, in one situation, if you have fault codes P1031 and P24DA both active and only these codes active, they recommend that you check the part number on the sensor. If it has sensor 227-33524 or older, they want you to replace the sensor. There is an updated part number and Volvo should be able to supply you with that. Once this is done, and with any case where you have to replace the soot sensor, they recommend that you update the engine ECU software. You see, the way these sensors operate is they gather soot over time and measure it at increments. After the measurement is complete, they heat up and regenerate the soot off of the sensor and begin this period again where they accumulate. It's my understanding that the regeneration process where the sensor is supposed to clean itself was not taking place properly and the sensor would not clean the soot from itself and then begin another cycle and at the end of that cycle it would obviously fail because it had twice the amount of soot built up on it. This would of course set fault codes for soot buildup. Just about every fault code related to the soot sensor is going to lead in a roundabout way to replacing the sensor. As soon as they have you remove it to inspect it or anything like that they want you to replace it. If there's one good thing about all this that at least with Volvo any soot sensor related fault codes do not cause any kind of derating or negative effect on the engine. So let's have a look at the sensor. In this case with a Volvo it's inboard from the passenger side step. It's mounted in the pipe exiting the SCR catalyst. You can see in this picture directly behind it is the NOx outlet sensor also in this pipe. Just like the NOx sensors the soot sensor has a brain, if you will, that's attached to the other end of it. This is where the sensor connects to the electrical system of the truck. In the case with these Volvos, the soot sensor is mounted on the inside of the frame near the rear of the transmission. It's mounted right next to the body for the NOx outlet sensor. As you can see, the sensor in this truck is of the old part number, and it also has a failed heater, so this one will be getting changed. To begin, just cut away all the zip ties holding all the wiring in place. In this case, Volvo likes to use a lot of them, but it's a good idea because it keeps all the wiring isolated and you don't see too many chafes. With the wiring cut away, you can unplug the sensor by pulling down on this yellow locking tab and sliding the connector back. Once you have the connector off, make sure all the pins inside are not dirty or corroded at all. To remove the sensor body, it's just two 10 millimeter screws mounted on top and bottom of the sensor. Now to remove the end of the sensor that sits in the exhaust stream, at least in the case of these Volvos, is pretty easy. They don't tend to seize up, at least from the last year or so that I've been seeing them. I don't know what the future holds for them. But anyway, even just an open-ended wrench can loosen them off pretty easily. 
but if they're in there super tight or if they're giving you any trouble at all you can always use a 22 millimeter or 7 8 open socket like you've seen in my other knock sensor videos Now here is the new sensor sitting next to the old one, and of course the protective plastic cap still on the end of it. And here's another important point you want to take note of. The sensor has this aligning tab on it, so when you go to install it into the exhaust stream and it doesn't quite want to fit in right, remember that this has to line up just right. It can't be just installed any way at all, it has to be turned to the exact spot. Once you line this tab up, the sensor should drop right in. So once the sensor is tightened down, you can install the new body in the place of the old one. Uh, tie up all your wiring properly, just to make sure there's no wires rubbing on anything. Now after the soot sensor is replaced, the next thing you're going to want to do, or have done, is to have the engine ECU software updated. This is a pretty important step because I've seen some of these sensors get changed out after going through all the proper Volvo diagnostics. The sensor was deemed to be bad. The sensor was replaced and within a day or two the fault codes are back. So updating the engine software is very important to keep the engine light out. After the repair is complete and the software has been updated, now it's time to test the system. To do this with Volvo, you run what they call an after treatment particulate sensor diagnostic monitor. Basically you're commanding the engine to run a self test on the sensor. To do this, the truck has to begin a partial park regeneration. It needs to preheat the exhaust to activate the sensor. It typically takes anywhere between 15 minutes and a half hour. It doesn't need to run a complete regeneration. Once this test is done, it should say that your soot sensor is working correctly and you're all done. So once again, if this video was helpful in any way, go ahead and hit that like button. Maybe consider subscribing to see more of them. And as always, thanks for watching.